small skin depression that is dimpling here you can notice that there is skin fold or wrinkling and this is known as puckering skin fold or wrinkling that is puckering and in third one you can notice that there are multiple nodules there is ulceration involving breast skin One of the common question which is frequently asked that how to differentiate benign disorders from malignancy on mammography films or mammography images. So if you see this mammography image here what you can notice, notice the nipple. Nipple is like this, ideally nipple should be like this. It means in this image what you can notice that there is nipple retraction. Second finding here you can see that there is opacity which is having irregular margin. And if you compare the density of opacity with rest of the breast, what it is having high density. So there is irregular margins of opacity with high density. Here you can see that this is what breast skin. If you notice there is a muscle here that is pectoralis major. So just behind breast there is pectoralis major. This is the breast tissue. In between breast tissue and pectoralis major there is a space that is known as retro memory space can you appreciate this is the retro memory space so can you appreciate retro memory space okay so on the basis of these findings other things which you can see in this image there is presence of micro calcification micro calcification another finding which is suggestive of malignancy in micro calcification the size of calcification is less than 0.5 mm What's the size? Less than 0.5 mm. So on the basis of these findings, it is suggestive of malignancy. So what are the features of malignancy? On mammography films, first, if we see opacity, there is irregular margin and there is high density. There is presence of microcalcification. Simultaneously, there are associated changes in the breast, like there is retracted nipple, thickened skin and obliterated retro memory space if you see this film here you can see the shape of breast and so you can see that it is dense and glandular the breast is dense and glandular can you see the black areas so dense and glandular breast another thing which you can notice that the nipple is normal so here can you see normal nipple apart from this normal nipple what else you can notice that there is presence of popcorn calcification, macro calcification or popcorn calcification. So all these findings are suggestive of a benign etiology and that is fibroadenoma. So what is the diagnosis on the basis of this image? It's the fibroadenoma. You know fibroadenoma is more common in young females and the characteristic feature which is seen on mammography and that is what? popcorn calcification so there is popcorn calcification so this is fibroadenoma see these images first look at this one what you can notice you can notice that there is chronic eczematous eruption simultaneously what else that there is total destruction of nipple so there is chronic eczematous eruption with nipple destruction see this image here you can see that the eczematous eruption has started from the nipple so it has just involved the nipple and if you see this image here you can notice that there is chronic eczematous eruption so this chronic eczematous eruption is seen in which particular condition that's known as paget's disease of nipple and in paget's disease of nipple there is underlying malignancy sometimes it is dcis ductal carcinoma in situ and sometimes invasive ductal cancer and very important point that presence of lump is not mandatory for diagnosis of Paget's disease of nipple. So these were the images of Paget's disease of nipple. What is the underlying malignancy? It is ductal carcinoma in C2, sometimes invasive ductal cancer. Invasive ductal cancer. Presence of lump is not mandatory for diagnosis of Paget's disease of nipple. And there is another condition where it's not mandatory and that is inflammatory breast cancer so two conditions one Paget's 
presence of lump is not mandatory and second inflammatory breast cancer so here you can notice these are the various images of Paget's disease of nipple can you see various images so you can notice that there is chronic eczematous eruption so these are the various images of Paget's disease of nipple now see these images what you can appreciate if you see the right breast here and right nipple and if you see the left nipple what you can see that the left nipple is retracted so there is nipple retraction and it's one of the sign of breast cancer in these images also see how it looks like yes there is nipple retraction one of the signs of breast cancer frequently asked now see these images what you can see this is one of the frequently asked image based question so here you notice that in the breast there is cutaneous edema and this appearance is known as pudy orange in the first image apart from cutaneous edema what else you can notice that there is nipple retraction also so this is pudy orange cutaneous edema what's the cause it is because of lymphatic obstruction by tumor cells so in pudy orange these are the lymphatics and what happens there is lymphatic permeation by tumor cells so tumor cells enter the lymphatics going to obstruct the lymphatics because of that there is cutaneous edema which lymphatics are obstructed you have to remember subdermal lymphatics and because of this obstruction these patients have cutaneous edema this is pudy orange there was one question in aims that what is the most conspicuous sign of breast cancer and the most conspicuous sign of breast cancer is what pudy orange so pudy orange is the most conspicuous sign of breast cancer Apart from pudy orange, three other signs are asked. One, dimpling. Second is puckering. And third is cancer and cuirass. Very easy to remember. Dimple. You have seen dimple? Have a look here. So what you can notice, dimple is the small depression, skin depression. So that's why dimpling means small skin depression. Puckering. Can you see this wrinkle? Skin folds. So this is puckering. So whenever there is wrinkling in the breast skin, or skin folds that's known as puckering and if multiple nodules are there with ulceration involving breast skin and chest wall that's cancer and cuirass so here you can see in the first image you can notice that there is small depression in the skin and this is known as what dimpling small skin depression that is dimpling here you can notice that there is skin fold or wrinkling and this is known as puckering skin fold or wrinkling that is puckering and in third one you can notice that there are multiple nodules there is ulceration involving breast skin and this is what cancer in cuirass this is cancer in cuirass okay question that what is the cause of dimpling and puckering so dimpling and puckering is because of infiltration of a ligament and what's that that's ligament of cooper so dimpling and puckering this is because of involvement of ligament of cooper frequently asked question and in cancer in cuirass there is infiltration of breast skin and chest wall infiltration of breast skin and chest wall and you are going to find multiple nodules and ulceration in the breast skin in cancer in cuirass see these images and tell me what you are going to notice you are going to notice that the affected breast is massively enlarged one finding Affected breast is massively enlarged. Second, if you see the surface of breast, it is bosculated. And this bosculated surface is seen in lipoma. Bosculated surface. Third important point, why affected breast is massively enlarged? Because the tumor is going to have rapid growth. Because of rapid growth of tumor, there is pressure atrophy and necrosis of overlying skin. So you will find multicolored skin also. So, what's the name of this tumor? This is Philod's tumor. What's the name? It is Philod's tumor, also known as cystosarcoma Philod's, also known as serocystic disease of Brody. In this case, affected breast is massively enlarged. There is bosculated surface because of rapid growth of tumor. There is pressure atrophy and necrosis of overlying skin. So there is one question, how you can differentiate Philod's tumor or cystosarcoma Philod's from carcinoma breast? First, see, Philod's tumor is a type of sarcoma, name is cystosarcoma Philod's. 
so it's a type of sarcoma so you know what is the most common root of spread in carcinoma it is lymphatic and what is the most common root of spread in sarcoma it's hematogenous so filoid's tumor behaves like a sarcoma and that's why there is hematogenous spread there is no lymphatic spread and if there is no lymphatic spread there is no lymph node involvement and if there is no lymph node involvement lymph node dissection is not required in cystosarcoma filoids one point second since there is hematogenous spread what happens because of hematogenous spread the most common site of metastasis that's lungs other differences that in cystosarcoma filoids there is no fixity to the skin and there is no fixity to pectoralis pressure atrophy of skin can occur but there is no fixity to skin and pectoralis and see another important point that nipple retraction is not seen so these are the points by which we can easily differentiate filoids tumor from carcinoma breast and this is frequently asked image based question now see these images what you can see here you can find out that there is cord like structure in inframammary region here also you can find out there is cord like structure in inframammary region and anterior chest wall so the name of this condition is monder's disease and it is characterized by thrombophlebitis of superficial veins thrombophlebitis of superficial veins of breast and anterior chest wall in the breast which region inframammary region and whenever we are going to palpate it it is like string or cord so other name of this condition string phlebitis so there is thrombophlebitis of superficial veins of breast and anterior chest wall breast and anterior chest wall in breast inframammary region what are the most commonly involved veins so here you can see lateral thoracic and in this region there is thoracoepigastric so the veins involved are lateral thoracic and thoracoepigastric vein now see these images what's your diagnosis on the basis of these images so you can notice that inflammatory changes are there in the breast yes so you can see there is erythema erythema of the skin so this is classical case of breast abscess and you know breast abscess is more common in lactating females especially the primates what is the organism responsible staph aureus so because of faulty technique of breastfeeding there is increased risk of breast abscess what are the other findings so here there is erythema there is tenderness and if you take the temperature over the breast the temperature is raised if patient is having breast abscess there is another sign what patient is having fever so fever is also there in patients of breast abscess now similar findings are seen in inflammatory breast cancer so how to differentiate breast abscess from inflammatory breast cancer if you take the temperature it is raised in breast abscess but temperature is normal in inflammatory breast cancer second in patients of breast abscess what there is fever but in patients of inflammatory breast cancer there is no fever important finding in inflammatory breast cancer at least 33% of breast skin should be involved at least 33% of breast skin should be involved by inflammatory changes clear so this is a case of breast abscess so we discussed it is more common in lactating females especially primates what is the most common organism responsible that is staph aureus on examination what are the findings so you are going to see tenderness you are going to find erythema and the temperature over the breast is raised anywhere in the body abscess is there we have to drain it and we have to give antibiotics so what's the treatment of choice incision and drainage with antibiotics this question was asked in neat that what is the first line antibiotic given and we give what cloxacillin antibiotic is cloxacillin or dicloxacillin and for how long this cloxacillin or dicloxacillin is given it's given for 10 to 14 days so this is how we manage the patients of breast abscess in these two images also you can notice that what there are inflammatory changes in the breast but if you are going to notice carefully more than one third or 33 percent of breast skin is involved clear here you can notice that there is 
in duration also and there is some evidence of pd orange also or edema also so all these findings in which inflammatory changes are there with involvement of more than one third of breast skin this is inflammatory breast cancer other name of inflammatory breast cancer means breast cancer which mimics inflammatory disease and that is other name is mastitis carcinomatosa it means inflammatory breast cancer mimics which condition mastitis or breast abscess how to differentiate we discussed temperature is normal temperature over the breast is normal and there is no fever